Last time we looked at how you can describe kinematics from a rotational perspective. Now we're going to look at force from a rotational perspective. So the rotational analog of force is known as torque. And it not only takes into account the amount of force you're applying, but the distance from the axis of rotation. So if you're trying to open a door and you have a choice between pushing, this is a bird's eye view of a door looking down, not that you would ever have that view because there would be a wall in the way, but anyway, uh, looking down on a door and you want to open that door by exerting a force on it. If you had a choice between exerting a force here near the hinge versus over here by the handle far away from the hinge and you imagine which one of those is gonna be more effective for easily opening the door some experience might tell you that this one here is going to be more effective. So this is different from what we're used to. Uh, we can imagine these forces being exactly the same magnitude, but we're going to get different effects. So the location of the force uh, relative to the axis of rotation, which in this case is the hinge, now makes a difference. And you can see this in uh, you know everyday situations, a tire iron here trying to get the um, uh, lug nuts off of this tire they tend to be pretty long rather than a nice short little wrench cut off here or something and the reason for that is you can uh, get more torque is what we're going to call this force that causes things to rotate and if that's not working for you if the lug nut is stuck what people sometimes do is they slide a pipe you can't really see that black on that picture but anyway slide a pipe over that uh, tire iron to give you uh, a greater distance from the axis of rotation. This distance from the axis of rotation here, RA or RB, is known as the lever arm. So if you get a larger lever arm, you're going to be able to get more torque uh, to rotate that object. That's why pipe wrenches tend to be quite long. It gives you quite a bit of torque. Now it's not only the location of the force but the angle of the force also matters. So start out looking at this picture over here. Don't get distracted by these down here. If we imagine the same force being applied to the same location on the door but now at different angles, which of these is going to be most effective? Obviously this guy is not going to do anything and you might know by experience that this is less effective as well and this again will be the most effective way. You're going to get the largest torque by pushing in a direction perpendicular to the, that's not a very good perpendicular sign there, perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So if you're not pushing uh, perpendicular, we can still analyze the amount of torque. By the way, the torque is going to be a symbol tau right here. So T-O-R-Q-U-E, there we have it. and it's just the product of the force times the lever arm with this little exception here that if your force is not perpendicular uh, you have two choices you can well we'll start over here because this is kind of more straightforward if I've got this force at an angle here then I just need the perpendicular component of the force times the lever arm and that will give me the torque if the force is just perpendicular like this one was, you can just multiply that force times the lever arm and you're good to go. Another way of doing it, which isn't quite as intuitive, but occasionally it's more useful, is taking the entire force, not a component of it, and if you extend the line out and then draw a line from your axis of rotation to that line coming off your force vector such that uh, you get a perpendicular angle here, and then you take that distance here, so you could call that the perpendicular distance times the force. And if your force is going, uh, say, in this direction here, you would extend that line backwards, and this would be your perpendicular distance here. But either way, um, it's going to work out to be the same. You're still going to end up with uh, sine or cosine of the angle, depending on how you're defining theta. So that gives you the torque on an object. Now you can have more than one force acting on an object in which case you would just consider the net torque due to those different forces and the locations where they're acting. So here's a quick little example. We have two wheels nested on each other and there is a rotation axis through the center of both of those wheels. We've got 50 Newton forces acting at different locations and this one is at an angle. So we're gonna find the sum of the torques is going to be 
since these are going in opposite directions, well, they're going to tend to make it rotate in opposite directions. Then we need to subtract these. So we can say the torque from B minus the torque, that's uh, not a tau, minus the torque from A. The torque from B is going to be the force of B times the lever arm, which is RB. And then we're going to have, I want just the perpendicular component, so that's going to be a cosine of 30 in there. Minus the torque from A, which is the force of A times the lever arm of A. And this one is perpendicular. You could put in a cosine of 0, but that's just going to be 1. So there is your equation. If you go ahead and plug in numbers, you're going to have 50 for this force. Uh, the lever arm of B is 50 centimeters, so 0.5 meters times cosine of 30 minus same 50 newton force but a different lever arm here. This one is only 30 centimeters or 0.3. Uh, this works out to be about 21.65. This works out to be exactly 15. So this works out to be 6. 6.5, oh, we haven't talked about units yet. So you've got a distance times a force, so that's going to be meters times newtons. We don't write newton meters because we don't want to confuse this with joules because torques are not energies. So we just swap uh, the place and make them meter newtons. Uh, in imperial units, you might have heard of foot pounds. So uh, same idea, distance times a force foot-pounds of torque they sell they talk about that with trucks and things like that all right